Hello, welcome to another video. This is an inequality that we're going to prove in this video. And you would wonder, why do I need to prove it? It's almost obvious. Remember, when you take the sine of an angle, like you say, you take the sine of, say, pi, you get zero. It's a very small number compared to pi, right? If you take the sine of any angle, you appear to get very small numbers, very small numbers, very small numbers. So, by the time you take the difference of two small numbers, you would assume that it is always less than or equal to the difference between those two numbers. So, in mathematics, the most difficult problems are the ones that are obvious, especially if you have to show it. So, how do we know this is always true for all real angles A and B? Well mean value theorem. Remember that from calculus one? We're going to apply that here and see how that goes. Let's get into it. So the first thing we're going to do is recall the mean value theorem because that's going to be the secret. So we know that a minus B means A is different from B, otherwise we're going to just have zero and all of this will just be always true also because we're going to get zero is less than or equal to zero and we're done, okay? But let's just say that A is different from B, so there's an interval between the two angles. Say so one angle is zero and the other is pi over four or something similar to that. Now see what happens. Since the function we're dealing with is um, a sine, we're going to say let f of x be equal to sine x, okay? So we want to be able to write this mean value theorem in terms of f. Now, what does the mean value theorem state? It states that given the interval, let's, let me use a comma b. So this is an interval just Without loss of generality, let's assume that A is less than B, and let's say that A is less than B, okay? B could be less than A, doesn't matter. We just need, we just want to show that there's a gap between A and B, okay? And let A be less than B. We're saying that if you find F of A, or let's say the gap since A is less than B, we don't know whether f of b is less than f of a, it doesn't matter. You know what? Let's just write it like that, okay? We're saying f of a minus f of b divided by a minus b. This is what you call average or the mean, the mean value of this interval. This is the same thing as f prime of C. Remember, where C is between A and B. This is the mean value theorem, okay? The mean value theorem just says that if you have a function or a curve and you're drawing tangents, I just want to show you here quickly. So, let's say you have a function that goes this way, and I keep drawing tangents. Let's say I draw a secant. I'm trying to find this point. Let's call this point C. If I draw a secant here, a secant from, let's call this this gap here. We're saying that, let's say this point is point A, and this point here is point B, and there's a C in the middle. We're saying, if you take this average, the value of this function and the value of this function, and you divide it by this, so you take the slope like this, so this is B minus A or A minus B, and then you do F of A minus F of B, which is what we have here, which is how you calculate the slope. What we're saying is that the slope of the secant line must be exactly the same as the slope of, there has to be a point somewhere in the middle here where the, this two, where the secant line will be the same thing as the tangent line. So this point will be the value of the function at C and basically the, the derivative rather of this function at C, which is the instantaneous um, rate of change at that point. And this is what you call the mean value theorem, where C is between, C is in the interval between A and B. 
I didn't need to do all these explanations, but in case you've forgotten what the mean value theorem was, that's what it means. It means that if you have a function and you go from A to B, the value of the function at A minus the value of the function at B divided by the interval, which is B minus A or A minus B, doesn't matter, will give you, is the same thing as a derivative at a point between the two of them. As long as, oh, I forgot this, con uh, this condition. As long as the function is continuous, you can see there is no gap, there is no jump, and there is no hole. So, now, what does this mean? Well, let's go here. We're saying that there exists, there exists a C between A and B such that f prime of evaluated at c is equal to f of a but what did we say f is f for sine so we can just write sine a remember so we can just say equal sine a minus sine b divided by a minus b. And this even makes our work easier because we have the absolute value signs around them. So we can actually say, hey, but what is f of c is the derivative of sine evaluated at c? Well, if we take, what's the derivative of this? This is going to be cosine. Remember that the derivative of sine, since f is sine, the derivative of sine is going to be cosine c will be equal to um, sine A minus sine B over A minus B. Now I can decide to put absolute value signs on them, but it doesn't matter when we get to the end, I'm gonna apply it. So what do we have here? It looks like um, we can cross multiply and say that sine A minus sine B is equal to a minus b multiplied by cosine c. Nice. Just whether you do a minus b or b minus a doesn't matter. So that's why we put the absolute value sign. Okay? So that even if one is positive or one is negative, it doesn't matter. Okay? So we do this. But one thing we know is that the cosine of any angle is less than or equal to one. And in order to take care of that plus or minus that we do, that's why we're using this absolute value thing. So whether this was positive or negative, we take care of it and we don't have any problem with absolute value anymore. So we can rewrite this as the absolute value of A minus B multiplied by the absolute value of cosine C. By the way, this is a scalar Okay, because this is a constant, it's a specific number, it's not a variable that's changing. So, but cosine C is, it's always less than or equal to one. So, whatever you get on the right hand side will be less than or equal to the absolute value of A minus B times one. Because this is the biggest this can be. Okay, so, Whatever you get, this will be reduced by this decimal unless it is one and that will be the maximum it will ever be. So we can say that the absolute value of sine A minus sine B is less than or equal to the absolute value of A minus B. And this was the original statement that we had. I hope you learned something. Leave a comment in the comment section. I'll see you in the next video. Never stop learning, because those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.